taken by this feeling baby we're invincible Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Not County. As always, if you're enjoying the save, drop a like on the video. It really does help out the channel. I hope everyone's staying safe and indoors and uh, enjoying yourself in any way you can. It's, it's weird times to be alive, but we must uh, band together, stay close to people, uh, but not too close, and uh, yeah, carry on. But since it's the start of the week, it's time to thank new patrons. Um, honestly, didn't expect to be getting any at all during this period, and I would have completely understood that. But massive thank you to Alan Tobin and Rob Mack, who both signed up over the last week. You really do not need to do that, but I'm eternally grateful uh, for that at a time like this, frankly. And also, just thank you to everyone that's been coming to the streams over the last couple of weeks. It's been uh, really, really fun. Uh, some of you might have seen, obviously, a lot of previews for the save that we're going to be doing after Notts County, so that's kind of interesting. Got lots more stuff planned with that to try and make things better, and hopefully be a bit up to three streams a week if I can find some extra time as well to really push that, because I love doing both, streams and videos. It's just great fun. And if you haven't checked one out yet, go over and follow on Twitch and maybe consider doing so. It's a good little, it's a different type of content, I'd say. Right, so you're probably wondering who this guy is. Some of you that watch the analysis video will probably know. This is Luciano Pinto. He was a centre-back at Aston Villa that we were looking at, potentially. And I talked to you guys briefly in the last episode. I think I said that we had another guy that we were looking at. And I was about to bring him in. This is that guy. Now, you might look at that guy. He's not great. And he really isn't. His heading isn't amazing. He's only six foot one, 13 marking, 13 tackling. He's cost 24 million in the end, which is, again, quite a lot. Admittedly, they wanted 50 million. So, in the end, we got a decent deal out of that. The main reason I want this guy is because those physical stats. He's incredibly fast for a centre back. And with us playing a high line, this guy's got that ability to recover if they do break our offside trap. And that's one of the things I'm quite interested in this guy. And he's played a few games since he's come in and has actually done a very, very good job so far. So, that's pleasing. Also, it's Tuesday, I realise, but kind of had a bit of a weird situation with the three live comms and then the transfer episode. It's time for Regen Sunday on a Tuesday. It's fine. We'll role play it. Head over to the Discord. Drop your regions in there. Let's go. Then we've got an, a Northern Irish lad called Tam Tack Man. Next up is Sunday Johnson, which I just love it. He sounds like a wrestler. I feel like that's a wrestler name. Then Yasuki Tsunami. Um, absolutely incredible name. Followed up with uh, Nguyen Vu Duong, uh, a Vietnamese centre midfielder playing for Inter. This guy is great. I think he's probably better, in fact, than the amazing Vietnamese centre back that PSG had on Stockport. I think it was. Then we've got Juan Rivera, uh, an El Salvad a Salvadoran centre back that's just about to join PSG. So he looks solid. Then Enrique Flu. I, I, I've not heard of that one either. Um, I assume it's just a type of illness that makes you walk up to people and go, would you dance? Then, Andre Buttman. Imagine a midfield with Buttman and Assman. I'm not sure I could cope with that. With Booty in there too, sitting in behind. And lastly, Niranga Pradeep Kumara Miraju Pekka Karun Narathana. That is quite the name. Um, He must have to have like two birthday cards just to fit it all across. So, that's Regen Sunday. Bit of a strange one, but there we go. Okay. So, first things first, Guerra has signed a new contract, although he will, sorry, not hasn't signed it yet, but he will at the end of the season. Uh, he'll be on, what is it, £230,000 a week, but I do not give a damn. He's our highest paid player and bloody hell he deserves it. It will take him through to 2030 with an extension as well, I think. So yeah, he is down to stay at the club and that is so damn pleasing. Now we could still lose him in the meantime, but I feel like if no one was going to bid for him before, um, City did put a bid of like 50 million on the final day of the transfer window and it was just like, ah. So that's good. I think Guerra is going to be here for the foreseeable future, but I won't like sleep on that until he's actually signed it properly. And Asman also picked up an injury which saw him miss five weeks. So he's missed quite a lot of these off camera period. Let's get into those games now. We've got one live com today. It's the Champions League and I'll tell you who we're playing in a minute. So straight after that wonderful 4-0 victory in the Charity Shield Fire, we went out there against Crystal Palace and just picked off, picked up where we left off. Assman was wonderful again. A goal and an assist for the Assman. I think for the second game in a row, to be honest, but more importantly, Jose Lelson Guerra. A hat-trick and assisted Assman's goal. But more important than that, and the game was actually the one that told me this, it was a perfect hat-trick. Left foot, right foot, header for Jose Lelson Guerra. What a lad. Back-to-back 4-0 -back wins to start the year, albeit one in the year. Then we had a pretty narrow victory away at Norwich. This was the game that Assman got injured in, unfortunately. Jean Carlos's goal right before halftime was enough for us to essentially get the win. I think we deserved it quite comfortably, but it was a really, really tight game. Dubois was very, very good on the night here, and obviously Jean Carlos and Guerra doing their thing. Then Brentford came and they parked the absolute bus in front of us legitimately. They played a back five with a four and then a one. It was just part of the bus time. And you can see from that how difficult they were to break down. Thankfully, we got a penalty, which Guerra was able to dispatch. And then I think it was a bad defensive header from a Brentford player. And Guerra was able to latch onto it and slot us 2-0 up before half time. But we really did not manage to create a great deal in this game. I think we got a bit fortunate, perhaps. And I think the lack of ass man in the midfield certainly didn't help. 
Then we traveled away to Burnley and it was a relatively similar story, but much more creativity was allowed on the night. Weirdly, that wasn't where our goals actually came from though. Two balls whipped in by Guerra, two headers from Celso, got us the 2-0 victory. You can see that we're having to sort of pick up these kind of scrappy wins, even in games where we're playing okay lately. But the important thing is we're actually getting them. And then lastly, we were able to get back to winning ways in a much more comfortable fashion. 3-0 at home against Cardiff City. Um, all is looking very, very good at the moment. John Carlos with another brace. He's on to three or four for the year. Mateus Cabral grabbing his first goal for the club as well. Assist for days. Acevedo grabbed an assist. Campbell got one. Guerra got another one, of course. Turgesson came off the bench and actually put on a blinder. Like, he genuinely was phenomenal coming off the bench in this game, considering he only played 22 minutes. Three chances created and three key passes. What an absolute lad. 3-0 win against Cardiff City. And that, you might notice, is that we haven't actually conceded a goal yet this season. Six competitive matches into the year, and it's still no goals conceded. Considering how little we've done from a defensive standpoint, it is actually quite amazing. So, the top of the league is as follows. We are one point, sorry, two points clear at the top, but there's still, you know, from Newcastle all the way to Chelsea there, it's very, very tight indeed. Brighton, as usual, doing their standard start off really well, then fade away. I, I don't know why they do that, but they do that every single time. Cardiff and Brentford look absolutely shocking at the moment. Southampton also conceding an awful lot of goals, but we aren't. We've conceded none. Scored 12, not the best scorers in the division. That's Chelsea by a country mile, but the defensive side of things makes our goal difference excellent. Guerra's got five in five. He's got four assists in five as well. Asman had a few in there too. All looking very good. Marvin Suarez with his five clean sheets out of five. It is all looking bloody fantastic. Also, Brentford have a player called Stig Hansen, which I'm pretty certain is the name of one of the captains on the deadliest catch. So that is name of the day. In addition to that, Darren Lever got his first ever England cap. I told you that he'd get it, and he did. Uh, he actually played really well, if I recall, on his England debut. Started the match for him. Brilliant stuff for the 21-year-old. to actually get an England cap. The first Notts County player uh, in this save, that's come through our youth academy anyway, to get an England cap. And that is a really, really pleasing fact. Just so, so happy for the lad. But we are nursing a couple of injuries. And today, oh yeah, that's right, it's Champions League time. Let's find out about that, shall we? So we may as well have a look. We've got Barcelona... Bayer Leverkusen, and Zenit St. Petersburg. Let's just break that down, shall we? There's Barcelona, who, yes, I agree, we did beat last season. Fair enough. But they're also Barcelona. There's Bayer Leverkusen, who are by no means a bad, tie, a bad team at all. And then there's, oh, it's Zenit St. Petersburg. Remember them? That's the team that beat Real Madrid in the knockouts. Admittedly, lost them in the end, but they still beat them. And we did not. So, despite being a pot one team, we did not get a great pot, I would have to say. This is bad pot, I demand a refund. But they do have Luka Jovic playing for them. I just noticed that. He's the guy that scored the goal against Barca. Pretty cool. So Nielsen's unregistered. We had a real problem with registering players this time because obviously we have no rules in England, but we have a lot of rules in Europe. So that was one of the downsides. He didn't complain, to be fair to him. So it's not too bad. Asman will be back not today, but soon. So who is actually available for today? Um, since Asman can't play, I'm still preferring Joran Beckert. Um... He's not been fantastic yet, but we've seen stuff out of him that I liked. Uh, Lever, Guerra, Carlos, Cabral, Campbell, Jesperson, and Celso, Acevedo, and Suarez. This is a really solid lineup. Literally, with the addition of Asman, this is mwah, perfect. So the bench is going to be Keskin, Pinto, Silla, Turgesson, Lancaster, Terso, and Hadi Aslami, the Iranian striker. I love it. They've got Emerson Hindman in their midfield. Fulham legend. And an Australian goalkeeper called Patrick Clark. Hmm. Well then, um, I guess we've just got to go and do what we do. I'm confident in the lads. I feel like they can achieve something. Let's go and have a crack. Bayer Leverkusen are supposed to be probably... I don't know if they're supposed to be third pot or fourth pot, in all honesty. But what I would say is we need to be coming here and getting a victory, I feel like. This is a, one of those games that is very important to us, really. Our main battle should be against Barca. And John Carlos is already through. Blocked. Becker saved by Clark. Okay. They do not seem to like the press. And that is a very encouraging sign. It's a bit like... Uh, was it Real Madrid last time that we pressed for days and the, they can see two goals from it? Acevedo. Through comes. Flicked down, flicked away, Cabral. Oh, what a good move that would have been. Encouraging start for us so far, but we very much need to keep the win, or rather keep the win, get the win, because Barca have already won their game, so we need to make sure that we're staying on parity with them. Because that's our, I feel like that's our only real competitor. John Carlos is just going to be allowed all the way through here. I think he's going to take his man on as well. He's all the way in. Obviously, he was never going to score there. Um, that was some Stepanek esque selfishness, but I don't think the pass was really on. Cabral. Could maybe flip this around the corner for someone. Oh, he's just giving it away. That was... um. Less than optimal. I'm going to be honest. Silas. Particularly if they can pick someone out of the back post like Paulinho and it's a good strike. They really are not clearing their lines very well at all. Lever. Can he cut back inside and whip one? He does. Cleared away. We're not done yet though. Dubois. Acevedo. Squares it all the way through. And again, the pressure is just relentless here. This is what I like to see from us. I want to see how long we can actually go without conceding a goal this season. 
If we can get through one more game, my God. Cabral whips it. Nice. Campbell, get that low ball. And Dubois' head. Oh, what a header. Remy Dubois. First goal of the year for him. Bayer Leverkusen nil. Knox County one. Remy Dubois. That is a really, really good piece of play. Greg Campbell. Nice work from Cabral, though. You could tell that he's actually trying to whip this nice and low, and it gets blocked. But then Greg Campbell. This is a gorgeous ball. Picks out Dubois. Lovely pointed header. Bottom corner. 1-0. The level of cohesion in this team this season just looks to be on a different level. I don't know why we've got so much better defensively. Um, I think Acevedo seems to have helped having Pinto around the club sometimes. Just a few more options at the back seems to have helped. That and Celso seems to be having a really decent year so far. Uh, he had made a lot of mistakes last year, I feel like, but he seems to have stepped it up. He needs to be playing better. Oh, and that's not a good way of doing it. Oh, what a ball. Great first touch from Guerra. Wow. Lovely football again. Jean Carlos out wide. He loves to peel away there. If he could pull this back for someone, he does. Oh, Guerra drops it short for Dubois. Second goal before half time would be very, very nice. Jean Carlos. Maybe look at Crossfield. Oh, look at the space of Becker. Cabral. Overlaps the day. Here's Campbell again. Can he find another one? He's. Can he whip it across? Leave us header. Good save. Well, half time. A goal up. I think that's pretty, pretty deserved so far. We're playing pretty damn well. Want to create a little bit more and grab ourselves a second goal. But more importantly, still haven't conceded a goal. Six and a half matches this season. No goals conceded. Hmm. Our right hand side is not functioning that great right now. Here we go. Becker. Except for Greg Campbell, of course. Slips it wide. Second goal would be very, very nice right about now. It's just as things are starting to go off the boil a bit. Levers coming through. Comfortable save for the keeper. He needs to run. He needs to be making a run beyond there. Beckett does brilliantly, but why is the full the winger not making the run into that channel? I find with this system, particularly this year, the wingers either perform brilliantly or not at all, and we end up having to change them. But thankfully, we've got tons of options to actually move things around. Plus, it allows us to take them on with some fresh legs later in the game. Guerra, yes, person, and it's tipped over the bar. We're very much pushing for that second goal. Dubois, he's got to look out wide. He does, Terso. Can he cut through? Find a cross. Lancaster! Oh, lovely play from the two of them. Lancaster should do better with the header, but great work from Terso. Slightly different approach going wider. Acevedo, ball across, and Guerra! Oh, yes. Jose Larson Guerra makes it 2-0. Deserved goal, I'd say. We've been phenomenal on the night here, looking very, very strong. Uh, seventh of the season for the lad. I do think that 40 goal is in sight. This is lovely work from Acevedo. The ball is beautiful. Great goalkeeping, but he's not going to get to the rebound there, and... Lovely. 2-0. Gorgeous. Dubois. Nice. Terso's got... Look at the space for Acevedo. Oh, finds Lancaster instead. Okay. Sure. Nice work. Diaby. Need some work from Acevedo here. Good ball in, actually. Cleared away. Right. Lancaster's got to look long, perhaps. Look at the channel. Guerra's made a lovely run for him. He's kind of ignored it, unfortunately, but he's still going. Defenders have got confused. The Lancaster's into the box, and that won't be a penalty. I thought it was. <laughs> Mera. Lancaster got a bit overzealous with his pressing game. They're all oh, Polinius through here. Good save by Suarez. He's had to do something. I want to see what Turgerson can do with some substitute appearances because he looks like he's got a bit about him, frankly. He can deliver some great balls, Turgerson. Acevedo with loads of space. Loads of men running across here. Can he find the right ball? He can! Lovely ball across. Sean Lancaster to the back post. And yeah, I think those uh, wing changes we made in the second half have really just made us a lot, lot better. Pablo Acevedo, nice work from us there. Turgerson, Terso waits for the overlap. And look at the space he's got. But the point is he drives into it and actually finds a really nice ball across. Lancaster's there and it's 3-0. First of the season for Shawnee. Lovely. And this has been an absolute romping, to be fair. And there's just something about everyone seems to be perfect for the roles they're playing. And by that, I don't mean like they've got green on them. I mean that they just suit what I want them to do. Diaby. Uh-oh. Oh. And Beckett's nearly won it high up the pitch. Now he has won it. We've got men across. He's got to find Guerra here. He has to. Guerra! Oh, you cheeky monkey. That is a lovely, lovely finish from Jose Lelson Guerra. Really well played there from Jordan Beckett. We're 4-0 up away by Leverkusen. My God, we could have had more. This, this defender, he, he nearly loses the ball and then proceeds to continue to dawdle. Jordan Beckett here, but this is, look at this from Guerra. Cheeky goes around the goalkeeper. That is something we would not have seen out of a player in this save more, like three seasons ago. Beautiful. I think that's what really does show how good of a striker we've got in the Son of War. He is on a different level this year. That's his eighth goal of the season already. And he's played, what, six games, seven games? And more importantly, it's going to be a seventh consecutive clean sheet in all competitions for us and for Marvin Suarez. And he's still had to make some saves today. Not a lot, but he has had to do it. Dubois. Jesperson. Everybody just seems to know their jobs. Becker. Oh, surely there's not more. Campbell. Can he find one last ball? Well, that's cheeky referee. Bayer Leverkusen nil. Notts County four. What a result. Guerra will probably get man of the match again, but Dubois was phenomenal. Lancaster did well off the bench. Even Juan Terso did well off the bench. Um, Just really, really pleased with everyone. Becker was phenomenal. Acevedo. Campbell. We're getting assists from our fullbacks way more. Everything is just looking perfect for a really good crack at the Champions League this year. And I think Guerra will be integral to that, to be honest. I still want to make sure that we are focusing some on the Premier League because I don't want really to want to be doing like a big chunk then off-camera games inside the episode because it would just take too long and then yeah. So next episode, is go we'll look at this. We've got a bit of a tough run coming up anyway soon. 
Next episode is going to be Barcelona and Liverpool live comms. Double live comm of that. And then what we might do after that is actually skip straight to this Zenit game here after that. Because that that'll not that be too little off camera. Anyway, so that's what we're going to do in the next episode. I'm massively looking forward to that. Uh, what a start to the year. What's that? Seven games into the season so far. No goals conceded. That's about as good as you could possibly have it so far. And every game so far has been a victory. And next up in the league, it's Southampton away. I mean, that, in theory, should be six wins out of six. Arsenal away is going to be a bit of a different story, but we could surely get to the Arsenal game and make it nine wins out of nine before that in all competitions, at least. So, if you've enjoyed this episode, drop a like. That'd be terrific. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be fantastic as well. Um, go over and follow me on Twitch. Why not? And I will join you guys very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, hold your gun, Capybara. See you soon. Bye-bye.